Oh, this game looks great. I can't wait for The Witcher 3. I've got my collector's edition all pre-ordered and taken care of up at the shop, and as long as they don't betray me, it should be a particularly cracking, cracking unboxing. But until then, I thought you and I could calibrate ourselves a little bit by doing a couple of cracking reboxings of previous Witcher games and their collector's editions, starting with the first one. And starting right now. Yeah. Yeah, The Witcher. Now, I knew nothing of this game in 2007 when I first encountered its promotional artwork in the shop, but it made a very good impression and I did roll the dice on it. And that gamble was rewarded because I got what would become one of my very favourite adventure role-playing games of the modern era. And a decent collector's edition to boot, which is what I'm going to be reboxing for you, yay, this cracking afternoon. Now, we've got to bear in mind that this is a lower tier sort of collector's edition. It doesn't have anything like the production values of a, a Warhammer Online or a, a Diablo 3. But at the same time, it didn't cost anything like those ones either. So it balances out in that respect. Now, like Age of Conan, this is another collector's edition that strikes the three cardinal elements of inclusion that we've identified in collector's editions. That is soundtrack, trinket and art book. So while it is a basic set, it's not bad for all that. So let's take a closer look, starting with the box itself. The box's design is, I think, simple but very effective with Geralt's silver monster-detecting medallion looming up out of this blackness, you know, foreshadowing the monster-hunting action to be found within. Shame about these damned logos, though, because I think they ruin the effect. Though I do find it ironic that Bioware get their name on this box on a game by CD Projekt Red, a developer who, in my opinion, have shown themselves to be far more adept in every meaningful way at making computer role-playing games ever since The Witcher came out. Great! The box is also simple in a practical sense, because it has no foam lining or moulded inserts or anything of that sort. It's just a box, but that's okay, because that means that this reboxing can be spring-loaded for quick access. Now the first thing to look at is, as usual, the least exciting and the least collectible. It's the game box, complete with disc and manual. Now, as I often say, the manuals are sadly becoming less and less relevant as we roll through an age of extensive tutorials and the, the prevalence of uh, learn-as-you-go design philosophy, not to mention the continued codification of uh, common game mechanics in these things. But, in all honesty, I hope the manual never goes away, because if the manual vanishes, then there's a good chance the rest of print might not be too far behind. In you go. Then there's the making of DVD. Now, I spoke out against these in my Age of Conan reboxing, so I actually watched this one, and sadly, my fears were confirmed. It is a lot of talking developer heads over footage of the game in various states of completion, and artwork that would be, frankly, better showcased in an art book, but we'll get to that in a minute. What this amounts to is a lot of promotional footage that is included, seemingly just to pad out this set. I still don't like these. Back in the box, making of. The soundtrack comes in one of these flimsy, thin uh, CD cases that no doubt you've seen many of in your day, with a very basic insert with the track listing, but don't let its basic packaging fool you. This is a very good soundtrack. Now, as with most game soundtracks, it is at its strongest when coupled with the game itself, serving as a really solid example of how soundtrack and the music especially uh, functions as a plot device within games. They're building mood and uh, establishing tone and reinforcing the tension as the game plays out. But it's also a very good soundtrack for when you're doing real role playing around a table with your mates. And I also had a very good time with it in my listening chair. Yeah, Witcher soundtrack. Great. Here we go. <sighs> <laughs> it's good. No regrets. No regrets at all. 
By way of trinket, the Witcher gives us a map like Age of Conan. It's quite a bit cheaper than the Conan map, being printed only on mere paper rather than a mock leather substance, but I find it to be quite a bit better in several key ways. And one of those ways is the fact that it's a double-sided map with a nice detailed uh, a layout of the areas directly related to the game on one side and an equally detailed map of the larger Witcher world on the other. This is a perfectly acceptable sacrifice of authenticity as a prop, which a lot of trinkets go for, on the altar of uh, practical function. It's good. The print is clear and legible, and the map is interesting and easy to read. If I had occasion to do so, I would have no hesitation in passing this over the table during a role-playing game. And I'm sure there is a Witcher role-playing game out there somewhere. A, a real one, I mean. Maps are also good for imagining wild, far-off places with exotic names. Not like boring real stuff, like Gunanana Man and Jimboomba. And now we find ourselves confronted with the main event of this collector's edition, the art book. And this one is a marked improvement over the last one we looked at, from Age of Conan. Though, it does fall into some of the same traps, and I am about to be fairly critical of this book. But I want to make it clear that it's not because of the quality of the art. The quality of the artworks that surround this game are top-notch, absolutely great. And they would have made a wonderful art book. But I don't think an art book is really what they made. Let me explain. The notion of this being a proper art book is shaken right away, as the first half of the book is full of really good art in tiny format, confined to a, a fraction of the page. And these first 85 pages or so are just dominated by endless sketches and design notes, paragraphs. It, it really goes on and on, with the actual artwork always confined and minimised. Here's an example of what I mean, where the sketches and the finished artwork are given virtually even footing within the book. It's as if the designers really felt compelled to prove to us that they had done all this work, instead of just letting us see the work that was finished and really appreciate that. As a result, this book really comes across like one that is about the making of the game, rather than being about presenting the art associated with the game. Here's an example of a really good art book, my Frank Frazetta art book again, that has the same elements with sketches and preliminary work and text employed in support of art, which is presented fully on the page and given the isolation it needs from clutter and other things so that you can really engage with it and really appreciate the finished product. The only place where this art book sustains this kind of art first presentation that you would expect in an art book is in the last section of the book, hidden right up the back, even after the developer's own vanity pages, which I think is pretty disgraceful. And here it is. Now look how good this art is, and look how good it looks when it's presented in this way. This lets us appreciate the work that the artists and the illustrators really did on this game, and it's them who this book should really be in celebration of. There are occasional flashes of the sort of thing that works really well, but mostly the finished art is confined to miniaturization in pools of black ink like we see here, which is a real shame. It's extra tragic because a lot of these images are real gems and if only the designers of this book weren't so driven to impress us with how much work they did, we could have had a real chance at appreciating this wonderful work done by the illustrators and artists on the game. Especially when it comes to the art pieces that are the most integrated directly with the game proper, and that's the erotica. The Erotics of the Witcher is given its own section in the centre of the book and I really appreciate that it wasn't stashed away furtively at the back of the book as you might expect them to do. And it's blessedly free of text, save for a small blurb down here that says how much of a sensitive issue that erotica is, which is a very dubious statement, it's not one that I actually agree with, and that they have no descriptions here and that they would rather use words where they can be useful if only they had followed that philosophy for the first half of the book. Sadly, this section falls into the same trap as those beautiful tableaus and landscapes that we saw earlier. And it's really tragic here because these are some of the most significant and best artworks produced for the game. Each of these little images, there's 24 in total presented here, 
really deserved a page of their own in this book. Although, I guess you could make the argument that they were afraid they'd be accused of being a, a, like a pornographic manual or something like that. But even if you allow for that, 24 pages in a 200-page book, if they had presented all of the art with the respect and, and space that it deserved, would have been insignificant. Considering that the artwork is of such a high standard, this is double grim. Although this section does have one of the few areas of, uh, of a nice full-page artwork, so that's something at least. Now, I was asked by one of my subscribers to clarify a point that I had made in my Age of Conan reboxing, that the Witcher's erotic art is a much better example of the genre than the one that they produced for Age of Conan. And I'm very happy to do that, but I'll probably do it in another video. So I don't want to get too far off point here. So what I find myself holding is really a, a strange conglomeration of art book and making of book and weird developer vanity project that even repeats images. Although at least it does give us the full thing on the second try. What is it that compels the designers of these things to make these sort of compromises? And it's not as if it happens all the time or even that often. We just happen to have struck two at once. And we've seen a good computer game collector's edition art book in the past. Come here, me beauty. Warhammer Online's art book didn't seem to have any trouble showcasing the great artwork made for the game, with only occasional text and very occasional miniaturization of image, though in these cases it really does seem as though it's due to space because this book is packed from head to toe with great representations of artwork. The Witcher deserved this. Its art is worthy of a much better art book, and I think it's a tragedy that it's entrapped here. Could have been a contender. Oh well. And that's The Witcher, Collector's Edition Reboxed. And it's not all that bad for a basic Collector's Edition, disappointing art book aside. But luckily, CD Projekt Red would completely redeem themselves with their next collector's edition for The Witcher 2. And that one is reigning world champion of computer game collector's editions in these lands. And we're going to get to that one on the next cracking reboxing. I'll see you then.